This lemon bundt cake is tart, perfectly sweet, and super moist, but you need to serve it with lots of lemon glaze. Let's make it. You're going to need two tablespoons of lemon zest and one quarter cup of lemon juice for the cake, and you'll need some more lemon juice later for the glaze. Add softened unsalted butter and softened cream cheese to a bowl and mix until smooth. Add the sour cream, sugar, vanilla extract, lemon zest, and mix for about one minute. Then add the six room temperature eggs. Yellow food coloring is optional. Add half of the flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Then add the lemon juice, milk, and then the remaining flour mixture, but don't over mix. Just mix until everything is well combined. Otherwise, dry cake. Pour the cake batter into a greased 12 cup bun pan and bake for 55 minutes or until a knife inserted in the center comes out clean and don't over bake the cake or it will be dry for the lemon glaze just mix some powdered sugar and lemon juice allow the cake to cool for about 20 minutes and then pour the glaze over the cake the complete recipe is over on my blog serve the cake warm with lots of lemon glaze and enjoy it these are the best the best brownies i've ever had just no doubt it's ramadan so my sleeping schedule is completely flipped so at 2 a.m we decided to bake brownies for the base brownie recipe i used heat to handles classic chewy brownie recipe decided to just spruce it up and add some salted caramel in the middle and it just really took it there and the brownie recipe in itself is so good but that salted caramel in the center just wow i'm gonna write the full recipe in the caption so find it there you guys have to try these this is the only sweet potato french fry recipe you ever need they turn out super crispy and it's taken me years to perfect just listen to the sound of this crunch we're basically gonna follow the same steps of making regular french fries but with one extra little secret we're gonna start by cutting our sweet potatoes into little fries make them as thin or as thick as you like and then we're gonna let them soak in an ice bath to remove some excess starch then we're going to parboil them that way they have that soft and fluffy interior for that secret step we're going to make a batter combining cornstarch and seltzer water and then add a little bit more cornstarch on the fries dip them in the batter and fry for the first time for a few minutes then turn up the oil to get it even hotter and fry for the second time until beautifully golden and crispy i know it's a lot of steps but trust me it's worth it they turn out so crispy on the outside but super fluffy on the inside now we just enjoy Today we're making a three cheese mac and cheese with hot honey chicken tenders and we're going to be focusing on the mac and cheese in this video. The hot honey chicken tenders will be in the next video. We're going to begin by whisking together our cream mixture and we're going to bring it to a simmer on stovetop. We don't want it to boil so make sure you keep your eye on it. Here I'm adding five tablespoons of unsalted butter and we're going to saute about eight minced garlic cloves for two to three minutes. Now add in two tablespoons of flour and whisk together for another two to three minutes. At this point we're ready to add in our simmered heavy cream and then we're going to mix it together and add in a half a cup of pasta water. Throw in all of your cheese and mix it together until it has a consistency similar to this. And then we're going to throw in our pasta, mix it up one more time, and then we're going to get ready to bake it. You can 100% bake your mac and cheese in a larger baking dish, but you're basically going to bake it at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes and then pop it under the broil just to give your mac and cheese a nice crust. And you're done. We're making a chocolate cake. It's February, it's chocolate dessert chocolate cake season, and we're making a really fun chocolate cake, Buckwheat Earl Grey chocolate cake. Delish. And if you're hesitant on buckwheat, buckwheat and chocolate go so well together. It adds like a little slight um, nuttiness and it's just delicious and Earl Grey obviously so good with chocolate. I love that. So we have some flour, then the buckwheat, some regular white sugar, right in, a little bit of packed brown sugar in there, some cocoa powder of course. Try not to make too much of a mess. And for our baking soda, baking powder and salt. All right in. Mainly, it's a lot of chunks in the cocoa powder, so you want to get that out. I have a cup of hot water here, and we're going to seep a bag of Earl Grey, and we're going to be putting hot Earl Grey into our batter. Oh no, I dropped it. That's all right. Mm, it already has the best smell. While this brews, we're just going to mix up our wet ingredients. We have a half a cup of sour cream and an egg, a touch of oil, and a good glug of vanilla. Oop, whisk all that up. Add our wet mixture right into the dry, and it's going to seem like really thick and wrong, but just trust the process. And you just want to mix this up until everything's just combined. You don't want to overwork it. See, very thick. Then we'll just remove the tea bag and whisk in the hot tea to the mixture. Right on in. And then we'll have a nice cake batter. You can really smell the buckwheat in the tea. I'm so excited about this flavor combo. If you can't tell, cake batter. And we bake. What a beautiful little chocolate cake. I love pulling off the parchment paper. It's so satisfying. Mm. I'm also very much into single layer cakes lately, so that's what we're doing. You know when you take a cake out of the pan when you can instantly tell it's going to be moist? That's what we got here, folks. So our cake is fully cooled, and I made this brown butter honey frosting, and we're going to top it off with that. 
spread it all out and that's it that's the cake look at that cake yum such a beautiful little cake mm. Mm -mm -mm. look at that mm. Mm. that is a good cake you can really taste the earl grey and the buckwheat so good mm. and the brown butter and the honey it all just goes so well together we're gonna make a hot chocolate cake first step chocolate mascarpone filling add a little sugar now we have to make the actual chocolate cake with hot chocolate mix inside yeah can't have a chocolate cake without cocoa any hot chocolate mix will do i think We over softened the butter. It's fine. It's fine. No ink spinning out. One more. Last but not least, vanilla extract. Chocolate cake. Bake it till it's crackly but still jiggly let's check on it the perfect amount of jiggle look at the gooeyness no hot chocolate is complete without whipped cream homemade dumplings are so much easier to make than you think i didn't realize before i made them and now that i have i can't stop making these spicy chicken dumplings they're so good the dough is just made with two ingredients just flour and water knead for a couple of minutes and set aside while you make the filling for that to some ground chicken i added some spring onions coriander grated garlic and ginger soy sauce sesame oil chili flakes and then you roll out your dough as thin as you can if you're not good at rolling circles freehand just grab yourself anything circular or a cookie cutter and then roll them out again as thin as you can i find this way so much easier fill and fold them however you like this bit's not the easiest but after the first few you'll be fine trust me pan fry and steam and serve up have them as they are with some dipping sauce or i like to enjoy them on a bed of sour cream drizzled with some chili oil not the most traditional way to eat them but i find the sour cream is a perfect balance with the spiciness if you make your own you're never going back to buying shop bought they get easier every time you make them the full recipe is in the caption as always Hi there, let's make the perfect summer appetizer, which are these flavorful buffalo chicken sliders. To start, you will saute a pound of chicken thighs that are cubed in a tablespoon of oil, and then you will add all the following spices listed on this screen, and then you will cook the chicken until it is completely cooked. To this, you will add a half a cup of your favorite buffalo sauce. I love the Frank's Red Hot Wings buffalo sauce, and so I added a half a cup of that along with one big tablespoon of sour cream, which will add so much creaminess to your chicken. And then at the end, you will just add a handful of cilantro, which will add so much freshness to your chicken. For the sliders, we'll be using King's Hawaiian roll, and so I've just sliced it in half. And on one half, I'm spreading a good amount of mayo and then putting our buffalo chicken. And then we will top it off with mozzarella cheese. You can also use pepper jack cheese. And then you will bake this at 350 for about 10 minutes until the cheese is nice and melty. Once the cheese has melted, you will remove the sliders from the oven and top them off with some coleslaw, which will give these sliders an amazing crunch. And then you will put the tops of the Hawaiian rolls along with some compound butter. The compound butter that I use was a garlic and coriander butter. I then broiled the sliders for about two to five minutes, depending on how long it takes for your butter to melt and the tops to get nice and crispy. And now all that's left to do is enjoy.